this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the build step that I chose to use uh, on the Tron 5.5. This is going to be for the ESD, uh, ESC installation, more or less like a tips and tricks kind of a video. Um, they do explain in the manual and they do give you several different options for uh, the ESC platform and some wiring tips here and there. Um, and this is just kind of how mine turned out, and since I'm making the build series for this particular model, I wanted to share how I did mine with you guys. Take in mind there's no right way, there's no wrong way. But I do feel as though this is a very clean, and uh, it's, a, it's a clean application, and it's very easy to maintenance if we ever need to. So, um, this is kind of where mine is sitting at right now. Um, please try to ignore the big old bunch of wires here, of course. This will be for my, my cabling down to my flat barless unit. Uh, and I'm not quite to that point yet. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out the wiring schematics and probably, you know, put all the, the clean braiding and stuff on that. So this is a bit of an eyesore at the point, but what we're doing right now is we're looking at the installation for the ESC and connections to the motor and everything. So let's kind of get a quick peek at, at how mine looks, how it turned out. So kind of a big heli on the bench here, but... So you can see that the motor wires and the ESC wires wrap right under. They're all nice and tandem. Um, the motor wires aren't sticking out the side, so there's no, you know, uh, a spiraling or anything that we need to worry about. As far as the battery is concerned, um, I'm still using EC5s, so I just routed the wires down right here and connected them to the uh, outer motor wires with two little zip ties. That way I can do a good safe connection there. And it actually holds up really well. And with the CG and everything on this and the, and the availability you have in the nose cone, Having your battery lead be nice and short like this, I mean the battery lead is only going to stick out about here, so I'll really just poop, pop it in right there. Um, it's going to make the canopy a lot more manageable. Um, for this side here, again, same thing. And then the nice thing is too, if you're using the Hobbywing ESC uh, and you want to use the little fan, the way I did mine is I mounted it in this orientation and then the fan wire just runs right up, drops right behind the capacitors. Let me get the lighting right here. Drops right behind the capacitors, and I, I mean, you really can't see it. It's not an eyesore, so I think it looks really good. So, uh, anyways, what I want to do real quick, guys, is I want to show you the steps that I use to achieve this goal. Um, I'm going to kind of take apart the assembly here and show you how to reconnect up everything, um, how the process was that I did, and then we'll just take an overall final review on it. And then we'll move on to the next steps and keep working towards getting this machine up in the air. Okay, guys, so the best way I, I, I would be able to probably explain or provide information to you is, is I'm going to kind of tear mine apart a little bit. Now, if you've been following the whole build series, I did talk several times about the fact that the four bolts that hold in the plate for the, for the ESC mount, I did not Loctite during the build up until this, this step, and, and this would be for this exact reason, so I can remove it easily without having to clean my screws every time and stuff like that. So, um, basically it's just easy guys, like let's say you had to swap out your ESC, or you wanted to install a new motor, or anything of that nature, of course, you're going to have to undo your cabling, so you would, and we'll talk about this later on, but however you route this down to your fly barless control system, you just undo your cabling, any zip times involved, and then you can just pop out these four screws. This almost just pops open like a hood, like the hood of a car almost. And I did have to, let me go ahead and disconnect here real quick. Um, since I was using the Nova motor, um, the wire leads for the motor were pretty long. Um, I did have to go ahead and shorten down the motor wires, um, but you'll notice with this, uh, and I think this is probably something really good to look at, is the orientation of the motor. Um, when we talked about installing the motor, I believe it was on the previous video, I did talk about the orientation a little bit. And the way that mine ended up mounting in is you can see that the, the motor wires kind of slightly come out of the, the left-hand side. They're not dead center, and they're not all the way over to the right. So they're kind of a little bit biased over there to the left. Um, Hopefully I can try to get that for you as good as I can, but you can kind of see. So, with that in mind, um, I did have to shorten up the leads quite a bit. So when I did the soldering, um, it's really easy, guys. I just, you know, again, there's only eight bolts on the motor, so I went ahead and just removed the eight bolts, 
took the motor out inside the mount and everything and then what I did, so with my with my ESC, let's take a look at how I mounted it. Um, I played around with several different options. Um, of course, I'm using the Hobbywing Platinum 120 amp model, and I do love that these ESCs come with the uh, the design where they can be bolted down to a tray. Unfortunately, with this one, I wasn't able to achieve that, so I had to kind of go back to the, the old school days. So what I did is a a double piece of Velcro there on the bottom if you guys can see the velcro and I always use that because it gives it padding some people like to just hard mount it with zip ties which is completely fine but it can slosh around a little bit so I always do that it gives padding and then I've just got two zip ties um, one on each side you'll notice that the the tray for this does have like little cutouts to accommodate the the, um, the zip ties so it makes it really really simple and easy and then that's basically it, you guys, is, is I then went ahead um, and took my positive and negative leads, just folded them over, and then again, I provided a zip tie on the outer motor wires coming out from the bottom, and just really cleaned it up real nice. It hugs it really good. Now, my Hobbywing ESC came pre-soldered with the bullet connectors on, so I didn't mess with those. So I actually modified my motor to accommodate the already pre-soldered leads on the ESC, in some cases, you know, again, I, I don't want to speak for any products in particular, but if your ESC comes unsoldered and your motor is soldered, you know, you could do the opposite. Um, if they're both unsoldered, then you've got a little bit more wiggle room to choose which wires to take from. So, and that's it, guys. So, good. And if I had to get a brand new ESC, boom, I would pop this, you know, the heart of my machine out like this, slap on a new one, and then if we were to go ahead and just reinstall it, Bring this little bad boy back over here. And it's nice. This is really easy. I like this layout. I like the design. And I love that it's clean. Um, I'm so used to building helicopters. and It's not that it, that it matters at all. But I'm used to building machines where, you know, the motor wires kind of twist out of the side. Um, or they come from, you know, up and over or some, something like that. And if you do it right, it's never really a bad look, mind you. Um, but I really like how these ones conceal right underneath. Um, now, some people may ask, what about reversing the the, um, the polarization or whatever? You know, let's say our motor's not turning um, in the right direction. Well, again, I'm using a Hobbywing ESC, so all i got to do is plug in the program box, and I can make this motor spin clockwise or counterclockwise. I don't have to reverse two of my three cables on here to change polarity. So, that's a good thing, too. So, they all line up straight, so let me get these plugged back in, right? So, let's say we're installing our brand new ESC. Boom. These bolt connectors are really nice too, and I'm using the X Nova, the ones that came with the X Nova motor, and they just connect really, really well together. I'm really liking it. And so there you go. So you've got your connections made. And guys, I'm really picky with my soldering. I do make sure that all the heat shrink lines up. There's no exposed um, connections or anything in there. And then, I mean, again, you just simply fold it right over. And then what we'll do is just line that up, pop it right back into place. You'll throw in your four bolts. Now, now at this point, I can finally go ahead and apply my Loctite to all four bolts. Everything's in. And then, again, if this were a replacement ESC, you would then just reroute your cables back. In my case, it's a new one, so... Um, I'm going to have to play around with making it look all clean and fancy. And I'm going to talk about an overall wiring diagram and schematics for this machine once I'm all the way done. But for this particular video, I just wanted to address the installation of the ESC and how I decided to pair it up with the motor, um, especially the motor connections, and also how our battery system and everything will work. So um, stay tuned, guys. We're going to continue on with the next video in the series. Um, I'm thinking we'll probably look into things like doing the servo installation, the overall cabling, and then we'll move into the tail install and everything else. So, uh, as always, guys, thank you so very much for watching, and remember, if Freddy can fly, so can you.